Greetings fellow members of the Esoteric Order of Gamers and welcome to part 3 in this tutorial series about painting the miniatures in the core set of Conquest The Last Argument of Kings by Parabellum Wargames and today I'm going to be painting the Abomination Yes, that's this huge creature in the Spire Army and I'm starting off with the flesh color. I've got Pallid Witch Flesh and Mephiston Red. That's what I'm starting with because I want a sort of pinky flesh color for all the flesh areas on this model. Now I'm making this color scheme up as I go along because there's not too much reference online. So I really just looked at the rest of my army and came up with a rough idea that I thought would match the rest of my army. And we'll see how we go. I'm making this up as I go along. So I mixed that color. It's coming out very pink. Um, quite red so yeah not too happy with that so it might add another color just to make it a bit more interesting and I'll throw in a bit of what have I got here in my rack of colors deep kin flesh put that in and make it a bit more of a fleshy color of course I'm mixing plenty of water with my paint to uh, make it flow on nicely onto the figure And that's a bit of a better color. It's not quite so red. Now when I'm putting on colors, I always keep in mind that I'll be putting a wash over the top of it as well. So that wash may darken it quite a bit. So I'm starting with a relatively light color here. And now I'm just going to start painting in with a nice big brush all these fleshy areas, all the areas that aren't the chitinous armor. And it's good to use a nice big brush at this stage because you just want to get into all those nooks and crannies and get the paint on the model, get a nice base coat happening. Now I'm going to mix a bit of dryad bark into my base color. And I'm doing a bit of wet blending here, which means that on the actual figure itself, while the paint is still wet, I can blend different shades of my base color together. So down there near the feet, I've mixed in that brown and made it quite dark and I'll use some of that darker color as well in the underside areas of the model and where the color would be in shadow. And that way I add a bit of variation to my basic color and um, it gives me a really good effect uh, of multiple shades without having to do anything fancy. It's very easy to blend the color while it's still wet. And here I am putting some of that darker flesh color on the underside of the body. Okay, that's my base color done and I've let that dry and you can see that uh, we've got a nice graduation going from the darker browner flesh tone up to the more pinky flesh tone. Now I'm taking Contrast Black Templar and I'm going to use this for all the chitinous or armor areas on the model. Black Templar I found is really good for black areas because it flows on really nicely and it will go blacker in the shadow areas and all the nooks and crannies and it'll go on a little bit lighter on the highlighted areas. So it builds in a little bit of highlight. It's not just a total flat black. And as you can see, it flows on the model really easily as well. When you're painting, you can use it straight from the pot. I'm carefully painting around that face area because I want to keep that white. And you'll notice here that I've carefully painted around the area that I want to be neat. And once I've done that sort of border area onto the white, I can then paint on a lot faster and more roughly to just fill in the rest of the black area. I'm doing the same here for the back armor, just carefully painting along the edge. And once I've done that outline, I can fill in the main 
part of the armour. You can see here already how the contrast paint is uh, flowing off the highlights a little bit and already adding a little bit of a highlight. I will of course accentuate this highlight with a highlighting stage a bit later. You might also notice how I move the model around so I get a nice position for my brush and allows me to make smooth controlled stroke strokes. So I always move the model around to get into the right position um, and make sure your the brush is comfortable in your hand when you're making your stroke so um, you don't make any mistakes. Okay, now I'm going to move on to the leg armor and paint that all black as well. Now at this stage I wasn't going to paint those uh, upper leg armor bits black. I was going to do that a different metallic color, but in the end I decided to make those black as well. So I went back and painted them black. Okay, everything is dry and you can see we've got our base colors down. We've got black on all the armored areas and our flesh tone on the fleshy areas. So now it's time for a big wash. I'm using Serif from Sepia. Um, that gives me a, a nice brownie wash. And I'm going to cover all the fleshy areas with that to darken them up quite a lot. And this will, of course, flow into all the recesses and give me some shadowing. Using a relatively large brush for that and straight from the pot. I've swapped to a larger brush here because I'm putting on quite a lot of wash here and you can be quite generous um, putting on your wash. Using the brush you can push it around on the model and push it out of pooling into the shadow areas and make sure it's evenly distributed on the model and doing its job properly. You can see how much this is darkening my base flesh color. So that's why I started with that pretty light color. That's thoroughly dry now. And as you can see, uh, the flesh is starting to look good. Now I started experimenting with how my highlights would look on this armor. So I just did this arm to see how it would turn out. You can see I've highlighted the flesh a little bit with a slightly pinker, lighter color, with white mixed in. And I've done pretty sharp gray and white highlights on the armor. There's a bit of a highlight blended in there on that, that area on the shoulder. And I'm pretty pleased with this result, so I'm going to continue painting the rest of the figure in this way. So first I'm going to get started on the highlighting of the flesh and for that I'm using Cadian Flesh Tone and uh, Mephiston Red to add a bit of pinkiness to the flesh and White Scar. And I'll be adding more White Scar to it as I get to the uh, lighter and lighter highlights. Now I've said many times of course if you're painting you've got to have a wet palette. My wet palette is by Redgrass Games 
and it's great. Now the good thing about this is that you can put your range of uh, highlight colors from the darkest to the lightest on your wet palette. It's not going to dry up and you can then pick the exact graduation of tone that you want from the palette. So here's my sort of base color for highlighting and as you can see I'm mixing in some white uh, in the end there so I've got a much lighter shade as well. So really here I've just got two shades of highlighting. For this one you might want to use a smaller brush. You're going to do some more detail. At the moment I'm just using these small and medium layer brushes by Citadel. Um, they're okay but they don't last too long. Um, if you have the money it's better to invest in a high quality brush like a Winsor & Newton Series 7 Sable. Uh, they're very good and if you take care of them they'll last for a long time. So I'm going in with my fine brush and my highlight color and just highlighting all those little bits of muscle uh, and sinew in the fleshy areas on this model. And because it's quite a large model this is going to take a while um, but I don't have to be too precise. Um, it's a large model not everyone is going to be looking at all the little special little bits of detail so it really depends how much time you want to spend on this stage. As you can see I'm doing it relatively carefully but I'm not being obsessive about it and really just using the brush to do uh, brush strokes to give the impression of that sinew and muscle. In a way it's almost a bit like illustration on some of these flatter areas that don't have a lot of detail. Um, you're actually painting in even more detail than the miniature itself has. For the highlighting of the armor I've got Mechanicus Standard Grey uh, again mixed with white and again just a couple of levels of highlight so a grey going up to a pretty light grey and then probably a few little dots of white on the very very sharpest highlights. So just going in with that grey first and highlighting the edges of all the black armor. Again it's a bit of a long task so settle back relax Put an audio book on or something to listen to and just work your way through it. Here I'm starting on the chitinous shell of the main body and just highlight, highlighting the edges as you can see with quite a light highlight because the sharper and lighter highlight that I have the more glossy this will look. Just changing to a finer brush so I can put in finer lines of detail there. As you can see I'm just picking out the areas where the light would hit the raised edges of this, this armour. You can see by using the wet palette I can pick a darker or lighter grey depending on the area that I'm painting very easily from the range of tone that I have on my palette. And the very sharpest area is just a little bit of pure white. Little specular highlights. You can spend as much or as little time as you like on this um, stage. I think this body of the abomination is um, very obvious so it's good to spend a little bit of extra time on it. 
You can see also I put in a few little random strokes as well sometimes. Um, little highlights that just sort of break up the flat black expanse of the armor. This just gives, gives the effect of random little highlights that are reflecting the light. And that's looking pretty good. Now I just have to keep doing that all over the figure. You can see here I've started to highlight the leg armor and then I started doing these what I think of as gems in the armor. So painting that a straight Mephiston red to start with. Actually that's a corn red starting with the darker red. And then uh, using Mephiston red and also um, mixing in a bit of bright yellow, that's Uriel yellow. And I'm doing this gem effect here. So you actually paint the uh, very light highlight in the form of a yellow on the bottom part of the uh, gem. And then um, you add some black and add a shadow to the top part of the gem. So it's opposite to what you'd normally think. The light is reflecting up from underneath and the shadow is at the top. On top of the darker part at the top of the gem is a little dab of white, a couple of dabs of white. And that gives it that highly reflective glossy feeling of uh, being a gem. Just be careful with your blending here, it can be a little bit tricky and I was doing this fast uh, to show it to the camera so um, you should really be careful when you're painting over that you don't um, mess up your blending. Just um, you might want to wait till the previous part dries before you start blending more colour over the top. I had to fiddle with this for a while but eventually it turned out quite nicely. At this point I did a little comparison with some of the figures in my army. These are marksman clones and while they have the sort of pinky flesh color I thought I wasn't really representing that um, a shabti bone with a wash bone color. So I thought I would paint a bit of that uh, bone color onto my abomination so it blends in a little bit better with the rest of my army. So starting with the brown um, to give a darker base. I think this is Gorthor brown. I started uh, painting over the top of the, the headdress or the uh, arrangement of whatever's going on on the top of the head of this abomination. And this is the area that I'm going to make more bone-like. While that's drying, I'll start doing what some of these red highlight areas. Um, it just makes this insignia on the chest pop out and it's also on the shoulder that you have these areas of red. Next up I'll be doing a heavy dry brush of a shabti bone on these bone areas. I'll wipe most of the paint off on my paper towel and then just give it a dry brush with this large brush. And this will lay on most of the bone colour but allow me to leave a little bit of brown in the recesses. Finally, I've just used some black to touch up the large bug eyes that this creature has. Here I'm applying a wash of Seraphim Sepia to the face. Or the, the fake face on this strange creature. This isn't actually its real face, it's a pretend face. And then Agrax Earthshade is the wash I'm going to use to wash over the whole bone area. I 
Now I haven't highlighted that yet, but already I can see this is looking much better. I really like the idea of that bone headdress linking it a bit more with the rest of the army. And this goes to show how you can change your colour schemes and fiddle with it as you go along. I'll highlight these bone areas with a Shapti bone highlighting up to white. The face also gets some fine highlighting as well with a very fine brush. It's pretty much pure white. I then paint the gem in the center of the headdress uh, red so that links in well with the gems on the leg areas. You can see with a fresh coat of paint how glossy those eyes look already. Um, I'll actually paint on those white dots. You can see the reflections from my lamp, but when I paint on the dots, it gives the same effect. And just a little bit of a white, subtle highlight on the bottom of the globes increases, increases that sense of uh, reflectivity and gloss. And there you have it, the face area is looking pretty good. The final step is always satisfying and that is to spray varnish your finished masterpiece. In this case I'm using TS79 Semi Gloss Tamiya Spray. It's got a slightly glossy finish uh, which I prefer because it makes the colour pop and here you can see it's been varnished and it looks great. I'm adding a bit of gloss varnish just to the eye areas as well to make them look extra glossy and insectile. And after all that work, the abomination is complete and I'm happy with how he turned out. He looks great. Quite a bit of work, but it really didn't take too long. Uh, as I said, you don't have to be too careful and precise with your highlighting. It depends really how much time you want to spend making the job as perfect. Um, I did this one pretty quickly. Well, here it is, my friends, my conquest, the last argument of King's armies for the Hundred Kingdoms and the Spire. We've got our leaders here. They're looking great. And we've got the um, brute drones. Really nasty looking figures. Uh, these are the normal drones. Lovely big unit of those. And behind them the marksman's drones. Uh, this of course is the core set plus some extra units. Those marksman drones are extra. And here we've got the hundred kingdoms. And first we've got our leader here. And we've got these crossbowmen, mercenary crossbowmen, followed by the men-at-arms, which is the main unit. Uh, this is an extra purchase, the uh, knights, or the steel legion they're called. And we've got the cavalry from the corset. Spectacular figures, those. Here's our noble lord from the corset for the hundred uh, kingdoms. And finally, the horrific abomination. And he's turned out really well. I'm quite pleased with the fact that uh, that bone head area mixes, uh, blends better with the rest of the Spire army. And those black eyes stand out more because that's his actual eyes. The 
face underneath it is actually some kind of simulcrum that happens when he consumes a, a enemy. So that came out rather nicely, I think. Just a final tip before I leave you, um, you can see these figures are not falling off their stands and that's because I put a little bit of blue tack under each one of these figures to attach them to the stand. And this is great because you can still move them around and they won't fall out or fall off and uh, they're easily removed still because it's only blue tack. So I highly recommend doing that for your miniatures uh, in this game. Well that's it my friends. Uh, my painting series on how to paint up the core set of Conquest, The Last Argument of Kings. Keep in mind this is more than the core set here. I've added a few extra units, but you do get a lot in that uh, starter set. There's a lot to get started. And uh, the system is great. I've only played it once. I've only had time to play once because of uh, lockdown and all the things that happened in the last few months. But I've really enjoyed it and I will be doing some more games and hopefully filming some battle reports for your enjoyment. That's the Esoteric Order of Gamers, orderofgamers.com. Please subscribe and go check out the website, and I'll see you next time. One last thing before I go. Someone asked me to do a size comparison on the miniatures, because they are a slightly larger scale than normal. But as you can see, they pretty much are heroic scale. These two figures on the left are from Conquest. Uh, then we've got a Games Workshop Stormcast Eternal, a figure from Dust, and one from the new mythic game, Rockbusters. Um, so, you know, not that much larger, or not larger at all than the Games Workshop heroic scale, really.